Okay, today's video is going to be on surf fishing tips. I'm going to give you a bunch of tips that my dad taught me. And you're not only going to catch more fish, but, you know, your life is going to be easier out there on the surf. The, the first tip I want to talk about is how you watch your poles. You know, it sounds pretty simple. People think, well, you just set them up and you watch and you wait for a bite. Well, that's true, but there's a different methodology I use, and I wanted to show you that. Now, most guys will set up three poles if you have three, and then they'll perch all their equipment right in the middle, and, uh, and then they wait for a bite. And the reason I don't like doing it this way is, is especially this middle pole, if that pole has a bite, it's really hard to see deflection because it's pointing directly away from you, okay? And you, you could miss a bite. You know, you could get sharked off by the time you get to that pole because you haven't noticed it. The other thing I don't like is, is when you're sitting in the middle here, now you're playing a tennis match uh, watching that left and right pole. Your head's going back and forth. And uh, I don't know. I just don't like it. Lost a lot of fish that way. And what I do is, is I set my poles up and then I walk my chair way down to the end of this uh, far right pole and I make sure that my back is facing the uh, the sun Okay, and now I'm going to be looking down all the way down on my poles uh, Not only is it going to be safer for my skin because I'm not getting sunburned uh, But I am not going to miss a bite I'm telling you 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 can concentrate and you know line your chair up so you can easily see all three and You are going to catch more fish now yeah, there is a disadvantage. You know, let's say you're setting up your poles 15 to 17 paces. I do 17 paces. So, you know, do the math. 17 times 3 feet, uh, you know, 50 feet apart or whatever, just so I don't cross lines. So, yeah, if you're sitting down here and you get a bite, you're going to have to run farther, but you're going to catch more fish. You're going to notice that bite a, a lot quicker then, and then doing it this other way where they're, they're facing away from you. So, so that's it for that tip. Uh, let's move on to the others. Uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is having a, a bucket on hand. You know, a lot of guys don't carry a bucket. And it doesn't have to be a fancy bucket like this. I do recommend, though, getting some heavy rope. Uh, what I like to do is just uh, drill a couple of like half inch holes at the top here, run the rope up through and tie a knot or, uh, you know, burn it off and melt it so it can't go back through. It's a lot easier uh, to take this bucket and go in the ocean and, you know, fill it with water. And when you catch your fish, throw them in that versus just throwing them in a cooler or an empty bucket. They're going to stay alive longer and you're going to have fresher fish uh so, uh, and like I say, you don't need this fancy $13 bucket. You could go to Lowe's and get a bucket and make your own, uh, get a little bit of rope and get the job done. So a lot of people don't use buckets and they should. And, you know, you could, uh, if you have a fishing cart, what I like to do is uh, my bottom buckets are for uh, water and ice, etc. cetera. And, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll throw my gear into another bucket and put it on top of this one. Now, uh, another trick I like to use is, is I'll drill a couple holes and put a couple small bolts through here. So uh, when I actually the uh, the bolt would be over here, and when I drop my bucket with the gear in it on top of this bucket, you know, let's say this is the bucket I use for water, uh, it won't go all the way in and it won't become lodged. So that's a little trick I use with bolts. You could use whatever you want, but uh, just drill a couple holes, have a bolt on each side, and uh, the bucket is an important part of your fishing. Uh, next thing I want to tell you about is getting a decent pair of pliers. You're going to use them all the time. You know, let's say you catch a catfish. You don't want to touch it, you know, so get that hook out, grab that top spike with those pliers, and I've lost too many pliers until I decided to get smart and get one with the holster that goes on your belt and it has the lanyard. Now, you can pay a lot less than this. I'm just showing you an example of, uh, you know, make sure it's got the holster and make sure it's got the lanyard. And uh, that's a, an important part of fishing, having that. So the other thing I want to talk about is a, a bait box. Now, 
Uh, I'm using uh, fish bites. Uh, I do use some uh, palm chew samples, but they're not available yet retail. So when you go out to buy your uh, your fish bites and your palm chews when they come available, if you put them in a plastic box like this and put them in your fridge, they're going to last a year easy. If you don't refrigerate your fish bites and palm chews, they're de going to degrade, they're going to get dry, they're going to lose their color. And uh, not only that, you know, if they do have a little smell on them from your hands, a half a bag goes in there or whatever, uh, this is going to keep you... Uh, you know, out of a little bit of trouble with your significant other. So the bait box for your fridge and your fish bites and palm chews, super important, okay? Uh, speaking of bait, now my dad always used these cloth uh, aprons that you use as a nail pouch, and they work excellent. You know, you put this on, and what you do is uh, make sure, you know, use one side for, let's say, your fish bites and palm chews and use the other side for fresh bait. Now, a little tip while we're talking about carrying your fish bites and palm chews around, you know, you, those bags seal. And if you forget to seal it and you're trying to, uh, let's say you're, you're down, uh, you know, the fishing's a little slow and you're trying to catch some sand fleas and a big wave hits you. If you forget to seal those bags, you're going to get them wet and you're going you're gonna to waste six bucks or whatever you paid for that bait. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about too is, is when you, let's say you're using cooked fleas on the other side. Uh, the tip I want to give you on that is, is let's say you have a, a large baggie full of cooked fleas. Well, don't put the whole thing in your pouch. Only grab about 12 or 16 cooked fleas, put them on one side, and throw a couple chunks of ice in there. That way, you know, the rest of the fleas aren't getting warm and mushy, uh, you know, and that ice will keep those other ones cool. And, yeah, your leg's going to get a little wet, but don't worry about it. Uh, and uh, that's, the, that's the tip I like using for keeping those uh, fleas fresh on the other side there. And another tip I want to tell you, too, is if you're wearing one of these, and you've got, uh, let's say, cooked fleas on one side, make sure that you twist this pouch so it's a little bit to the side of your body because if you take your surf rod and mash it up between your legs when you're catching a fish and it starts crushing these cooked fleas, you're going to ruin them. So that's, uh, that's enough on this pouch. But they work great and they're cheap enough. And I do recommend going to Lowe's. They treat veterans a little better than Home Depot. Anyways, uh, next tip. Um, when you're cutting line, I like using nail clippers. My dad always used nail clippers, and if, uh, you know, you can't get one, just get a lanyard and attach it to this thing, and I like to run this lanyard uh, around my, um, my pouch that I just showed you and then stick these in my pocket, and they're always handy. You know, you'll always have them nearby. Uh, nail clippers work great when you're retying a rig or you get sharked off. Uh, next tip is having a towel on you. Now, I don't use these fancy towels with the, with the clips on here. I just use a regular towel, and I wrap it over the top of that apron string. And every time you catch a fish, you know, you might have sand all over your hands. You don't want that sand going into your expensive pen reel or whatever you use. So, you know, you're going to need this thing on your belt, and it works great. You know, you could even wet it a little bit so your fingers get clean. So that's another tip is having that towel on you at all times. Uh, next tip, well, that was searching for my buckets. Disregard that. The other tip I want to tell you about is, uh, you know, I wish I had a nickel for every time I see people that use sand spikes that are all, you know, PVC all the way down. And, uh, and then they're pounding it in with a rubber hammer. And there's just no need for that. You know, go watch my video on making your own sand spikes. And you're going to find out, and, and I demonstrate it in the video, you just wiggle these things into the sand and you're done. No pounding anything. Yep, they're going to cost you more. Most of my tips help you save money. These will cost you more. But if you follow the directions, you'll have them for life. And you'll never need a rubber mallet again. You know, and... Uh, and that's about it. Those are some of the biggest tips for surf fishing. Uh, I hope it helps you. I hope you catch more pumps. And if you like these videos that we're putting out here, please subscribe to the Pompano Brownie channel. And that'll do it for this video.